Hi, y'all, and welcome to Monday Night's All Meta Mode podcast with Mike Ayer and myself, Amanda Digger DeGaz. Before we get started with tonight's episode, just a friendly reminder that Dirt Digest magazine just had their uh, November issue uploaded to the site on November, uh, well, yesterday, November 1st. So what you do is go to dirtdigestmagazine.com and click on current issue and you can check out November's issue. Uh, while you're there, seeing it's an online um, magazine, you can go and check out prior issues as well. So you can catch up on old issues, you can download them and read them at another time, or you could read it live right there. So awesome. I actually haven't gotten a chance to look at it, but I am definitely looking forward to it. And yeah, so our next quick reminder is tomorrow, as you can see with the post I posted, um, my care and I tonight are um, going to be doing the show and Gypsy is traveling. So everybody knows though, Gypsy's birthday is tomorrow. So definitely make sure to reach out and give her a shout, show her some love. Um, yeah, so other than that, that's uh, that's about all I have for uh, any reminders or anything like that. And hey, Mike, how are you? I'm good. I'm sorry. I was trying to share that we were live and I was <laughs> on mute. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's all right. <clears throat> I'm getting over a cold, but I'm doing good. Good. It's been a good. long, long time. Yes, it has, and I've missed doing the podcast. I really have, but I've we've been doing really good. Randy and I have been busy in Ohio, and um, just kind of had to take a break for a moment. We got a lot going on. And is it? Uh, are you getting cold weather out there right now too? It's been pretty pretty chilly. <laughs> like today was. <laughs> excuse me. 42, I think, was the high, but this week it's supposed to get as high as 70, Thursday or Friday, so I'm really looking forward to that. I, You know, what I told you earlier I moved to Texas, and I'm like, oh, I miss Ohio winters, and now this is my second winter in Ohio in a row, and I'm like, oh, I miss Texas so bad, and uh <laughs> I was telling somebody earlier, it's like I, lately, you know, last couple of years, I've been missing those great Texas winters and just getting those Texas summers, and I'm tired of it, you know, because <laughs> uh, summer, summer's hot in Texas. I can just imagine, yeah. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. And actually, what, so wintertime down there is actually prime digging time? Yeah, that's when I usually... Um, my whole, I mean, it's just, except when Gypsy drags me out, because, you know, she don't care if it's 150 <laughs> degrees. Yo. Crazy. That girl's crazy. Yeah, but uh, other than that, like, I try to stay in in the summer and not go out, because, I mean, it's so hot. Like, even, you know, I've gotten up, like, with the sun and, you know, drive you know, drive 15 minutes away. And by the time you get your equipment and stuff ready and you start metal detecting half an hour later, you're sweat pouring down. you. Yeah, you know, it's so hot even in the mornings. So, uh, but, uh, I really haven't, you know, I haven't even been on since gypsy was here and that's a good thing to talk about. Um, although I did write an article in dirt digest magazine. Um, you know, I'm always talking about field hunting and how much I enjoy it. And I'll give you a really good example of why, to me, it's so much better. So while Gypsy was here, <coughs> we hit <coughs> one, two, three, four. We hit five. five or six sites that were still standing because the crops were up. Well, not all of them were still standing. No, they were. Um, a couple of them ha hadn't been lived in forever. Um, but we hit, I believe, five or six spots. I'm I thought it was six, but I'm trying to think of the other one. Anyhow, over a two-day period, like early morning until dark, um, 
I hit a house that eighteen was on the eighteen fifty eight map. Um, oh yeah, there was six. Anyhow, um, it's still livable. No, although nobody lives there, um, the owner actually lives close to me in Texas. Believe it or not, grew up in Miami County like I did. And we hunted that, and I mean, there were a couple relics, but absolutely nothing special come out of there. Um, Dave uh, Canterbury joined us on that hunt. Later in the day, we went to a house that is probably a half a mile off the road. It's gated. There's a gate. It's out in the farm field. It's in the woods, and it was so thick. Have you heard all this from Gypsy? Um, bits and pieces. Cause she had, you know, what was it? That other hunt she did the camp. Okay. Okay. Um, it was so thick in the woods. The house was still standing, but it was so grown up. Like you were breaking branches just to get around it. And there were a couple barns. You couldn't see any of it from the road. <laughs> um, I doubt anybody's ever hunted there because when I got permission, he said, um, you know, no problem. But he said, I have neighbors watching that. The police watch that. He said, most likely somebody's going to come out there. And he said, just let them know, you know, if there's any issues to call me. Real nice guy. Uh, and although nobody bothered us, um, you know, he does have the property watch. But most people, unless they overlaid, wouldn't go out there. Most people wouldn't trespass, most detectors. So I feel pretty confident. And not only that. There was a lot of ground to cover, but I, you know, there just wasn't much found. And uh, the only couple good finds that I found is on the one side of the house, a field butted up to it and the beans weren't growing there. And I'm talking like two or three rows of beans for 30, 40 yards. We're not talking a big area. And I found a, a buckle and I think a button um, I didn't find anything in the woods anywhere around the house. I mean, we spent hours there. So then Monday, Gypsy and I went and helped look for a body um, from a cold case. And uh, so then Tuesday, it was just her and I, we got an early start. We started in a, at an old schoolhouse. Now, it wasn't 1858, but it was probably 1860s, 1870s, still standing huge area and we didn't spend a lot of time there but it just you know you know when you hunt in ground and it just you, you can tell by how much iron and how much stuff's going on that it's just not saying that there's not something there but you're just not feeling it like yep. there's not a lot of hits there's not so we had let me see one like three one two three other sites. Uh, so the next one we went to was a house um, that's still standing with, I mean, there, there's holes in the roof. You, the roof you could throw cars through. I mean, not much, not much going on there. It hadn't been lived in year and it hadn't been lived in, in a, in a number of years. And the grass was tall there, but it was, it was, you know, knocked down and I do think part of the problem was the grass was high. Mm -hmm. But uh, Gypsy found like a wheat penny, um, maybe a couple wheat pennies. I think I found one. You know, just it just didn't produce, um, you know. And I'll say, hunting all this in two days, obviously we were not thorough. Um, we were trying to find a hot spot, find something that felt good. Um, you know, and with the grass as tall as it was, I mean, our coils were probably minimum three, four inches above the ground. So it's like, okay, let's go try another one. Well, I knew where I, I had, I've got permission for a farmhouse. I, I would say probably 1820s. And it sits, way, it's a farmhouse, it's way back, uh, well, not way back, it probably sits 100 yards plus off the road. Uh, on the other side of a creek and um there were a lot of signals but there was so much modern trash um it's a rental and oh. there had been some partiers in there well, and it was still a rental but but my friend owns it and um 
we hunted that and there's a lot of ground to cover, but there was so, so much trash. And, um, the, the last place we went was, uh, an old cemetery. We didn't hunt in the cemetery, but we hunted around it. Um, it's a big, pretty big cemetery. I would guess a hundred headstones somewhere in there. And, um, I just know that there, I, I haven't hunted there in years, but another one I have permission for and, uh, never really hunted around there. Actually the house that's still standing, it's been added on to and stuff, but it was on, it's an early house. Um, I don't remember if it was on the 1850s map, but I think it, well, it was on 1858 map. So it's early. I know it was now because uh, the road, the, there actually used to be a road that come through there. Now it sits probably 300 yards on the other side of the house. So actually, as you're coming down the lane from the road that's there now, like the barn's in front. And uh, that always kind of like, this isn't right. You know, they didn't build barns in front of houses. Uh, and back then, although the map's available online, uh, years back, I went to the library and found an older map, an 1858 map. And it's like, oh, there was, this road wasn't here. The road actually went between the cemetery and the house, <laughs> which is now the backside of the house. Um, but anyhow, uh, we did find in the tree line a pile of cut stone. But again, the grass was tall. But what I'm getting at, we did six sites, six or seven sites, all of them dating back, you know, 1850s, except the schoolhouse. Well, I mean, earlier than that. And there's something about when houses are still standing. I just, we don't do as good. And I'm not saying we didn't miss some stuff and, and they, you know, they wouldn't be worth metal detecting again. But you're not going to go to a field site where a house was and not dig some stuff. And I mean, the best find uh, gypsy, in my opinion, gypsy found an Indian head penny. I mean, that's nothing. I mean, six sites. And, you know, we obviously didn't cover them like we should. And there were some other circumstances like being grown up, tall grass, that kind of thing. But an Indian head penny after probably 16 plus hours. I mean, the one site we walked out of and it was getting dark. I mean, it was like, it was dark by the time we got out. Um, <coughs> so, you know, like I told Gypsy, we would not go to a, a, a cut two or three field sites and have the same thing happen. There's no way. And, um, you know, that's just, that's what lead, leads. I mean, I love, metal detecting up against a house that's all grown up and the brick is literally crumbling out of the side of it. And you, you can't even get so close and you can tell it's like early 1800s yeah. and early homestead. And that's awesome. But if you're not finding anything, you know, I mean, it's, you know, and not that I would ever not do those, but in my experience, field sites are just so much better so much better question for you though on those sites like you guys were also going through a drought weren't you at that time yes it was super dry here absolutely and then yeah. when the grass is up high and i'm sure you do this but do you change your sensitivity and go up a little bit higher to make up for the difference that you can't actually get the coil to the soil uh, depending i mean i'll run it I mean, it's just whatever the ground will let me, let me Go run. Go to, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I will definitely run it. I, I, about any detector, I'm trying to think. Any detector, in my opinion, and a lot of people will disagree with me, I like running my detector as high as I can without getting chat, not nonstop chatter. Some of these people will run chatter run them so high that, that there, there's constant chatter. And in my opinion, at least for me, that just doesn't work. I'm not gaining anything. Um, I've done some experiments, not with all of my detectors, but with some, and I have never noticed, you know, 
but I'll also say, um, I really struggle with, with noises. Uh, years ago, I start, I was having really bad anxiety and I started seeing a, a psychologist and I learned through seeing a psychologist, one of my big triggers is noises being in crowded places that are loud and that kind of stuff. And I, I don't handle when a detector's going pep, 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 yeah. pep, 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 in my ear. And, but I also do not think in most cases there's advantages to run in your detector. You know, it's, it's, you're literally running it unstable. Yeah. And, um, I, 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 agree I with just, you. That's just not my method. And in my experience with the detectors I've tried to do that with, I have not found any advantage. But, uh, yeah, we were turning them up and doing everything we could. She, I think she threw on a big coil there, if I remember right. Uh, she was actually hunting with the Max, um, I think, because she was using the big coil. But um, I felt horrible, and I know... You know, um, the school site I had hit probably, <clears throat> excuse me, 10 years ago, um, the one site, the very first site we went to, I hunted last year for like an hour, maybe two, with a friend. We didn't cover a 16th of it. Um, um, one I had hit, the one out past the creek probably again 10 plus years ago and i forgot my headphones at home which then i lived in in lanka over an hour away and i just wasn't into it i found a barber dime that day and i was just done like i wasn't into it i didn't cover much of but what i'm getting at none not a single one of these sites was hunted out by any any stretch of imagination and uh you know, like around the cemetery, I'd never hunted, even though I, I just, you know, I'd hunted around the house. I'd done stuff like that, but I'd never been around that cemetery, even though I, I expect, suspected that there was a, a, a church back there. And um, so, yeah, nothing was hunted out. Nothing had, but we just... I felt horrible. You know, she was in Ohio. Dave didn't find much. I mean, everybody, uh, my good friend, Donnie, Donnie Lang joined us, uh, that Sunday with, um, with Dave and, um, but you feel bad, you know, I mean, it was beyond my control, but God, I felt so bad that the gypsy went home pretty much. I mean, she could have found, I wanted her to find something in Ohio that yeah. she's never going to find in Texas. And, and that didn't happen. It's, it's well it was the same when she came up here and like the large set <laughs> it was one of those but I think I you know a certain someone's in the chat right now and I, I you know coming from her story she still had a good time so <laughs> yeah you know but I mean you just can't help and, and something I'll say this and I hope she doesn't get well I shouldn't say it. well I, yeah I will say it I feel like some people are so lucky in this hobby. Um, and I'm not saying they don't put in the work and stuff like that, but they just, it's almost like targets are drawn to them. Like, I don't know that you, you would find anybody more experienced with the detectors than me. And I'm sure there are, but I mean, I'm not one of these people that, Oh, I don't know how to use it, you know, and, and I don't know how to set it up and stuff. Um, I will spend all day on the site and I just don't, I feel like there's people that are, that really just are lucky and I have my lucky moment, but I feel like gypsies like that. Like she has to fight tooth and nail for every single good find she has. You know what I mean? Does that, have you ever been out with somebody and you're like, Oh, here, here's another button. Oh, here's another cool relic. Oh, here's another. And, and you're like, I don't know. I feel like, um, does that make sense or do I sound stupid? No, no, it makes sense. It makes sense. I mean, though, um, the, you know, the most time I got to spend with her at pound the ground, but when we went to the button dump, she was just pulling one awesome find after another. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, 
I haven't really gotten to do too much. Today. Oh, no. Oh. She pulls awesome signs, but yeah. I, I feel like her and I tend to work harder at it. I mean, oh, we yes. do more research. Yes. We know our detectors more. Agreed. Uh, we, we spend more, you know, her especially, she'll spend hours out in the field um, long when everybody else has packed it up because it's too hot or it's too cold or you're too wore out. Not her. Oh, yeah. um, yep. You know. Yeah, I understand what you were saying. It like nobody yes. else. Yeah. Yep. Um, but I, I did. I felt horrible. I, I would have liked, you know, Dave. Dave's down in Southern Ohio, and he's he's finding some really good stuff. But I still would have liked to have him. I, you know, I don't think he's been on any any sites as old as you know we hit that day. Um, I'd love to, and he's still, even though he's got some great finds, I'd love to have shared with somebody new to the hobby. You know, there's nothing cooler than somebody newer to the hobby finding a first and being there with them, you know? Um, but Gypsy, I, I was just so disappointed that she didn't go home with a large scent or, uh, <laughs> something really older than she she can find in texas that but it just didn't happen um it, it was it was really it was it was kind of rough on me you know i feel i felt horrible god she spent hours and time and days and, and you know she would never she loved it and we had a great time together but it, it was uh yeah yeah it sucked <laughs> put put simply <laughs> But I mean, it, it, spending time with each other was great. Um, but you know, our finds and stuff like <coughs> it just wasn't there, just wasn't meant to be. But uh, and that's why I love fields. I, I you know, I you, you'll have a bad field site. Um, you know, last year I um I got onto a field site that um nothing i found one button there wasn't even iron <laughs> and i went i went and did more research on it and it was there i saw early aerials of the driveway coming in and you could see the footprint of where the house sat <clears throat> and i overlaid it perfect and i was right on top of it so you know they they took that dirt out there or they moved it um pushed it on the property some i don't know but like no iron no iron over That's there. Strange. Um, yeah, yeah, really strange. And it went up into. Um, I think it was off. Like, like it, if I remember correctly, it was on like a 1911 map. Uh, it was there an 1874 map, uh, gone by 1919 map. But like the earliest aerials, you could see the footprint. Uh, the driveway was clearly still there. And although that's all gone, I'm like, no, I was right on top of that. Where, where's, you know, you'll run into that. Um, but rarely if you can, and I, you know, we'll run into, you know, it's 200 yards out in a field and you, you just can't find it. Um, I, I've had a handful of those and, and it's not that it's not there, but how long do you spend especially when you got 10 more to go to, how long do you spend looking for that when you're, you know, what I'll do is I'll go to my, if it's way out in the field, I take a handheld GPS <coughs> excuse me, and uh, I'll get right on top of where I overlaid it. And then I'll just start, I'll put like, leave my shovel there and I'll just start circling out, like doing a circle and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um <coughs> <laughs> actually i take that back what i do first usually if it's all flat or the same level i'll do that if what i do is i look around for any hills any high spots and i'll walk out to those and see if i can find out find it because you know usually they, they build on high ground and uh then if not i'll come back to, to my shovel and i'll just start circling out but you know you circle out three, 400 yards and you got other places lined up. It's like, okay, we'll put this on the back burner. And we do come across now and then where they're just gone. Um, no iron, you know, like the one I was just telling you about, I have come across it a couple years ago when Matt 
come down from Cleveland area, Akron area to, to hunt with me. We had one in the house directly across the street is still standing. Um, and without a doubt, there's a high spot and everything and nothing. I mean, I found a buckle, but not any iron hits, nothing. What is that? You know, so, you know, you run into that, but when you get into the iron, you're going to find good stuff. If you find where the house site was and there's iron, 99% of the time, it's going to produce. Well, I have heard of like fire sites, the carbon in the fire actually like making sites quiet. So have you like, if you get to a site like that, have you struck it, like stuck your shovel in and flipped to see what the different layers look like? Well, we can talk about, that's a great, that's a great subject. Um, I, I can tell you many of the field sites I've been in, they burnt to the ground because <laughs> you find a lot of melted stuff and you'll find brick that's black and stuff. Yep. Um, you know, back then they were heating with, um, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what. Try to get a house insured right now that has a fireplace or a wood burning stove. <laughs> it is next to impossible because the chances of burning that house to the ground is goes up exponentially. Um, and, and that's all they did that and oil and houses. I mean, it was often how, I mean, houses burned down a lot more back then than they do now. I believe <laughs> some of the earlier sites, <laughs> excuse me they would come in build a cabin build a house whatever and then as the family grew as they cleared more land matter of fact i just read about this i know it happened they'd build a bigger house and and i think a lot of times they would burn that house down you know or it would get to where it was falling down so they would just burn it down because we come across a lot of sites that that burn um, but we still hear iron and stuff. I mean, we still find stuff. So I don't think, I don't think that's an issue. Hmm. <laughs> I just, I, I have heard of sites being quiet because they're being masked by that. So I, you know, throwing it out there because you do know some fields. I know, uh, the big one that I hunt, there's an area that is quiet and I change my settings entirely. Um, because I know that they were burning. But like no, no iron, no nothing. Yeah. Yep. And um, what happened is they were burning in one of the old cellar holes and they thought it had gone out when in all actuality, what it (laughs) did is it moved underground and caught the fields on fire. It actually Uh worked underground on roots because it wasn't a plowed field. It was a hay, a hay field. Um, <laughs> sorry. No, no. Oh, that is interesting. I'm going to have to. So I did. I changed my settings entirely. Um, but again, I, you know, I was using at that point the MX, uh, my MXT, and uh, shifted it. Um, changed the sensitivity. Changed the threshold. Um. You know, you've got certain settings you can set it on for relic and this, that, and the other. Um, shifted it out of those, and um, yeah, I, it's then that I could start hearing signals. It was like they were being masked by um, the carbon and the fire that had been left, and you could tell when you flipped the dirt. Um, you could see it, but it wasn't until you know right. six inches, eight inches down, you'd see that black, the ash. Wow, that's interesting. I'd never heard or thought of that. I mean, now maybe, that site, but <laughs> that site had, uh, I was with, uh, two other guys and, um, all three, all, all three of us run in different detectors and nothing. We couldn't find anything, uh, to make a noise. And, uh, so I don't know. I, you know, maybe that's one more thing that, 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 could be looked at but i do think some of these sites they just maybe sold off dirt at some time and just 
come in and took, you know, three foot off the top of that hill or something. Hmm. Um, I'm not sure. Cause some of them, uh, I, I had another one last year, two years ago. <clears throat> you can see where the driveway goes into this field and there's no need for it. Um, it's, there's the original farmhouse is still there. There's another drive into a field where a house was. And what I'm getting at, and, there, and not only that, there's like a big stone pillar right by this driveway. And this house should have been <coughs> about 50 yards in <coughs> and nothing. And I scoured that field and uh, nothing, no signals, no nothing. Um, I did get a couple iron hits uh, and I, to see what it was and it was you know farm you know farm stuff like a farm implement i don't really but nothing that would have been on on a uh you know back then so i don't know we do come across those now and then and, and i would love to know why yeah I, the only other thing too is i have a friend that's in i think it's kentucky <laughs> And he had found that what happened was sites, they had that blacksmith or, or whomever. Yeah, it was the blacksmith that did the nails. And then what they would do is when they were moving to a different uh, site, they would take the wood, either burn it all down and take the nails with them or take it piece by piece along with the nails because they'd be going into an area that there was no blacksmith. Um and I thought that was quite interesting as well that they would try to take. But even then, you'd have a presence of, of other items around um, that you should be able to locate. I have not been coughing all day. <laughs> we get on the podcast and I can't stop now. And now concerned. Concerned. For... Concerned, Mike. <laughs> I am so sorry, everybody. But, um, yeah, I, and I think that's a possibility, you know, and another possibility I think is, um, you know, some of the earliest houses and they could have been around for 25, 50 years. They could still be around. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story about that. Um, where they were pinned together with wood pegs or what weren't nails used, you know, when nails before nails were readily available especially when they were coming to a to new land um and i'll tell you a really neat story years ago my good friend donnie who come up and hunted with us um he said hey they're taking down this house uh over here we ought to go talk to him i'm like yeah and um what it was it sat right beside the driveway um right when you pull in and uh, on the other side of the driveway was was a telephone pole, and um, they were having, you know, it was hard for them to get semi. This is a big farming operation, and by the time we stopped in, we what had happened was um, this house, you know, we drove by it. We both drove by it on a regular basis, and I would have, if you would have asked me, you know, how old do you think that is, I would have said probably forties. Had siding on it from what looked like the forties and stuff, and kind of built like in that style. And uh, we stopped in, and he what he'd done is, is the guy was probably in his sixties, and uh, his dad was still alive. And his um, he said his I think it was his grandpa or maybe his great grandpa had had told him he always suspected that was one of the original homesteads, and. Uh, so his dad decided they're going to tear it down because they're having trouble getting the big equipment in, you know, with the telephone pole on one side and this house on the other side. And he said, before we just knock it down, let me tear some siding off and see if that, if grandpa was right or great grandpa. So he started tearing it off and <coughs> lo and behold, it's a, it's a early log cabin. It had an addition on it, which was still a log cabin. But the original part of it had no nails. There were none. You couldn't find a nail one. All of it was pinned together with wood with wood pins. And that was a real eye-opener to me. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, I've been, you know, if that could survive until now, you know, up to a few years ago, I mean, it could have still been lived in. 
they had rented it out, you know, then, and it just become a nuisance for them to get equipment through. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's still houses like that, I'm sure. Yeah. But, you know, if you think you're looking on an 1858 map, that thing could have been built in the late 1700s, early 1800s, no blacksmith around. So they pinned it together. Yeah. And it's yep. a survivor. And, it, you know, so now at some point they burned it down. They, they tore it down. Well, there's no nails. You know, where are you going to have nails at if, if there was never any nails used on it? You know, so <laughs> I think that's another possibility as well. Yeah, that very, very well could be the case. You forget about the pinning and you do, mm. you see it in old furniture as well. No nails. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, that that could lead to no nails or very few nails and very few iron. <laughs> Excuse me. I had a site last year that, um, again, on 1858 map, and it's directly across from where a house was on, that still lived in, still standing. Um, and I couldn't find it, but I hit this little iron debris and I mean like 10 foot by 10 foot area and I kind of blew past it. I had other sites to hunt and I mean, I probably spent a few hours and walking the roads and I just didn't, it didn't register to me that little area could have been it. And then, you know, within a day or two or maybe later that day, I'm like, oh, I need to go back there. That could have been an early site, um, you know, pinned together with, because I, you know, although I did walk, you know, where it was at, I walked through, I hit that iron debris, and then I jumped over four rows and walked back the other direction, jumped four rows. I didn't like fan out from that iron debris and, and look really good. So... Very well could could be a site there that I just overlooked. But or it yeah. could, could be a mix of all of the above. <laughs> mm-hmm. One of those dreaded sites. I know that um, something I'm sure we'll hear more of, um, especially what's happening in England right now. Have you heard of the green waste? Yes. Oh, yes. man. Uh, that's... So anyone that's listening that doesn't know is basically the, what is it, the, the composting, the, they're composting and then selling that compost to farms, but they're not composting correctly. So there's aluminum and batteries and a ton of metal in with the compost mix. And I know that they're spreading it on all of these fields so yeah. I know detectorists and, oh man. So that's one thing like I, you know, I'm thinking of and I'm really hoping doesn't come our way with right. some of these fields. Yeah. When I did um, the UK podcast, we had a guest uh, talking about that. He had some fields that he couldn't even hunt because, uh, and then they filled me in on it. You know, what was going on over there? Cause I'd never heard. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that's a real issue over there. Now, I know it's not, I don't think it's happened on many fields yet, and maybe they'll get corrected before it becomes a, a big issue because I haven't heard of that being, like, widespread. Okay. Hopefully I'm, we don't. I'm starting to hear it and see it more. So I don't know oh, if it's man. maybe, you know, it had been done prior and those detectorists were like, yeah, this field's done. And then these are new detectorists on those said fields, same fields. Um, but from what I've heard, it's also screwing up with archeological digs. And I'm like, Oh, oh sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That's a mess. Um, uh, there's something else I'm kind of excited about just happened. And, um, <clears throat> so, and I'll have to verify this, but <clears throat> I, you know, I, I think most of us have big ones we're working on that might take months or years 
<clears throat> and there's one I've been working on here in Ohio for a number of years. I heard about it probably close to 20 years ago. And, <clears throat> you know, as we learn, we can apply more of what we've learned. Well, this town was one of the earliest towns in this county. Um, I don't even know if I'll get to, to test out my theory this year with everything going on, but because um, it's, it's a little bit of a drive. But this town, the earliest, you know, it's one of the earliest towns in the county. They don't know where it's at. You know, there's no record, really records of it other than, I mean, they know there was a town, but where it was at and stuff, nobody knows. Well, I've even over the years talked to other detectors that had heard about it, but nobody knows where this town was. Well, <clears throat> I, I don't want to give anything away. So I'm going to kind of be a little bit, um, there's, I got permission for a piece of property within a couple miles of where this town supposedly was. And I, and I really hadn't thought anything about that town <clears throat> being there. Well, the town disappeared. It was there. It was there a number of years, but it was abandoned because of flooding. And so they, 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 they did the town to, to low ground. Well, one day I was detecting this property I have permission for, and <clears throat> without giving it away, there's something on that property that made a light bulb go off. Hmm. You still there, Mike? Think about, think, <laughs> yeah, can a, you hear me? Yes, yeah. Uh, a church? <laughs> cemetery i don't want to say okay. uh, no <laughs> no structure no let's say no structure okay there's no structure there um but a big clue that it's way earlier than i suspected <laughs> and all of a sudden i'm thinking well you know if the next closest town is 20, 30 miles, you know, because this is one of, this is like one of or the earliest towns in the county. Being two miles from that creek would still be close. You know what I mean? I mean, how else would you describe where the town was except the nearest creek or the nearest feature? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Um, well, through some research, I hit something big yesterday, and at some point I'll share all of this because it's it's pretty helpful stuff. Um, <clears throat> there's some things, you know, I, I think a, a good some teaching tools here. Um, but I am about ninety nine percent sure that is where it is now. Now, when I hunted it, I never went. It's a huge, huge field. I never went to that side. Um, I want to say the last time I hunted it, by the time I thought, ooh, I need to go that direction, snow was already flying. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> and then since I've moved from Ohio, I was back last year. I, I've got Randy. I've got Randy this year. Um, but that really excites me because that that's like, you know, in early town, there was a mill. Um, you know, I, that's what I live for is the earliest stuff. And uh, <clears throat> I even got into an argument with a guy once. And, and another thing, and, well, I, I didn't tell the whole story. My thought was, okay, I'm, I'm two miles from where this town is supposed to be. But I'm also on the highest ground, and at the back of this property, it drops off feet, and it goes flat all the way to the creek. <clears throat> and it's I, I so I when I kind of had this epiphany a couple years ago, I looked on 
the topo maps, and that's the highest ground in the area, but it's still in the floodplain. Hmm. So, you know, for hundreds of years, mankind has known to build on higher ground. I see how they thought it could have been saved. Yeah. But it, you know what I mean? It's still in the floodplain, so I could still see it flooding, and, you know, they thought they were higher. So I really think, I really suspect that town was there. But, you know, there's two fields. There's a north field and a south field, and they're split. I've never been in the south field. Because the reason I first went there is there's two houses in the north field. There were houses in the mid-1800s. So it wasn't until... I kind of put it all together in my head. I found something on the property that told me, you know, wait a second. Hey, this, this, this is way earlier than what these houses would have been. And I am close to that town and I'm on the highest ground around. Whoa, this town could be here, but I didn't get a chance to check it out yet. But I hope this year, I hope before, I go back to Texas. I do get the opportunity. Yeah, that would be great. So once you and I know, I know guys have looked for it and they've been miles off. Because when I was, you know, newer to the hobby, I thought the same thing as them. They say it's here, you know, along this. And okay, I'll I'll fill you in a little more. I kind of left out something important. It's where a creek and a river come together. Well, it's close to the creek, but it's two miles from the river, roughly two miles. That leads me to believe, you know, like I'm saying, like if you were, if you were to describe somebody the, 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 where the next, you know, a town that's 30 miles away and there's nothing else around, no other towns, no other features. If it was within two miles of a river and along a creek, that's where you, I mean, you know what I mean? That's close enough back then when you're talking nothing else was around for miles yeah. saying that it was, that it was where those two met within two mi- less than two miles. That's as good as putting you right on top of it. So that's something I've kind of really been looking at the last several years. You know, when you, when you read these old accounts of these towns and these, you know, saying, you know, right outside it, you know, I was talking to a friend, uh, yesterday, I believe, about this, and he, we were talking about that exact thing. How, you know, he's found old accounts like uh, for my, or you know, right outside a town was blah blah blah, and he finds that it's four miles outside a town. But you know, back then, when the next closest town was twenty miles, four miles was nothing. Yeah, two, three, four miles was nothing. You know, it was right outside a town to them. So. um you know, that's something, I think that's a big, big hint to help people. You know, when you read about early accounts and they say it was, you know, it was where, where this creek runs into the river and you go there and the grounds are low and you don't find anything, now look for high ground in that area. Look for other clues um, because that was good enough to describe it back then, even though now, you know, now there's a town within five miles of there, you know, but that town wasn't there then. Yeah. You know, now you'd say it's five miles outside of town, you know, right along blah, blah Creek. Well, that's, you know, that's given more detail, but back then there was nothing else around to describe. Very true. Yep. Um, so I'm really excited. And hopefully I'll, I'll have an update on that. Cause I do hope to get out there with, um, this year nice um ohio relic hunter bill says uh he's only a phone call away right i miss bill i haven't talked to bill in months i haven't really talked to anybody i've kind of had a lot going on and uh it's it's really busy here in ohio right now and um you know with randy with me and and um uh yeah, taking care of some stuff and uh, yeah, so uh, 
Yeah, good times. Yeah, it doesn't help either that obviously we know that there's a warm up this weekend, but winter sadly is a couple blinks away. Yes, it is. And uh, it's that I'm not looking you in forward the to that. Face cold. <laughs> when was it? When was it? Nineteen degrees there. Uh, you just told me. You told me before the show. It was Friday, I think. It was nineteen or uh, Saturday? Yeah. I don't know. It was. It's been cold since Friday. Thankfully, I guess they had said we were supposed to get this past Friday six inches of snow, and um, yeah. snow. It did start to you know spit snow, but man, uh, Massachusetts and Connecticut and that way they really they actually plowable snow. <laughs> And wow. me, me up here in Maine is like no, no snow. It got really uh-huh. cold though, um, and mm. it's definitely you know the evenings are have been below freezing. So, yeah. if, you know, I know. I'm I glad. I think. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say I'm glad you know we have 60s coming up, but with it being in the evenings yeah. and it's dark at you know 4:40 until uh, uh, six something and it's below freezing every night it's some of these fields i'm like no <laughs> they, right. you know, the crops are gone it, they've uh, been final hay is gone and i'm like oh yep let me add it. yep <laughs> but what were you know what were you gonna say I was just going to say, like, I'm really struggling with Ohio weather after living in Texas the last several years. And I think that um, every morning you should text me, like, the temperature in Maine so it'll make me feel better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can definitely keep you updated on how cold it is here if it will make you feel better. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it would probably make me feel better for sure because we're doing, like, four, like, it was 42 today, but it was really sunny. Um, we're supposed to get up to 70 Thursday or Friday. I'm so looking for, I'm probably just going to, so something I told, I told you, and uh, one of the things I can do with Randy that's really awesome is we go for a walk or a ride almost daily. We're getting over cold, but um, we haven't, well, I mean, I, I went out today. We did a nice bike ride. I got him a, tra- uh, a kid's trailer. And I strap him in and we go for rides and it's really, you know, it gets me out of the house. It gets me doing things. <clears throat> it gets me exercise and that's going really good. You know, I need, you know, I was talking to Gypsy about this and she thought it was a bad idea. I need like, you know, they've got those screw in um, for dogs. You screw into the ground and, and you put a leash on or, you know, a, a lead on it. Yep. And I was thinking like doing that with Randy, but I got shut down by her and stuff. And they said they thought that was a bad idea because, I mean, you just can't take a metal detecting. I don't see a problem with it. I mean, I think that's better than a shot caller, right? (laughs) I mean, Uh, yeah, but I can't, I can't throw him in in, in the stroller and us go for a walk. And I'm where I go is, along the old canal and uh, you know one section we we do often there's an old uh, uh you can see parts of the canal and the, and there's a lock there's a um a canal uh, a foundation of the canal the guy who attended the canal you know the lock took care of the lock uh, i forget what they called it you know so there's stuff like that and it's really cool to see some of that on my bike rides and uh, walks, and it keeps us going. And um, so it's it's been good. It's not metal detecting, but Randy's just I, – I don't know of any way I could take him metal detecting, and uh, it kind of makes it difficult for now. But uh, we're getting out. We're having fun. Yeah. No, that sounds good. Yeah. Um... He said, uh, Bill said, are you, um, you're talking about Miami Erie Canal? I believe so. I think that's, uh, it runs through like Tip City, through Dayton, and ran through Dayton. Um, there's still remnants, good remnants of it on our bike trail, like at the Tip City area. Dayton. Yeah. <clears throat> what about Dayton? Ah, that's where I usually, I think I fly into every time I ended up out there. 
Dayton. Oh no, you gotta you gotta fly in and and watch Randy for me, and I'll send you pictures <laughs> while I'm out mal detecting. I'm just kidding. <clears throat> I'm just kidding. Well, I'm just kidding. Could you like, do, like, does he? Can he count to five? No, Randy's two and a half. He doesn't page. talk yet. Right. He is starting to. Like, he knows when I say no, he shouldn't be doing it. But he's like, eh, what's the worst dad's going to do? You know? Um, so he doesn't listen real well yet. He's he's learning. But, uh, yeah, he, he's, yeah. He, and he's so full of energy. Like, uh, the other day, where was I at? Um, oh, I went up to the, to the bike trail. And, um, <clears throat> I put him down for a second. There's nobody around. There's no cars. I mean, you can see, you know, anybody pulling in for a quarter of a mile. And I put him down just to grab the keys out of my, out of my pocket. And he was gone. And I mean, my big fat butt had to run to go grab him. He probably got 20 or 30 yards, but I mean, I just don't know how I could take him in a field. That boy has energy for days. So he's a runner. <laughs> so he's a flight risk. On, yes, yeah, he is a flight risk, big time. <laughs> so, what's your opinion on a collar in one of those leads? I'm uh, just curious. I've got two nose. No, actually, I would try to get one of those like PVC. I forget what they're called. They're like the old. I I mean, I'm pretty sure my this will help tell my age, but we had that like fenced in area as a kid. Yeah. To play outside. It wasn't really PVC pipe, but that's what I'm thinking. Oh, he's a climber. He is a climber. Yeah. And that was my next question is, uh, can he, you know, is he a climber? I mean, I, if it's like eight foot tall, I might be okay. And maybe electric (laughs) across the top. Ah, What if it was like the the, uh, screen fencing up like three feet? That would probably work, but, but he he might be eating dirt then. <laughs> I don't know. I, was I mean, say, he's he's a. You could get some of those pool noodles. All right, here's my idea. You can get some of those pool yeah. noodles and actually make a, a net fed a net net fencing that hooks into like the pool noodles going in a circle, and then cut some mm-hmm. so they're straight up and down. So you have a pool noodle on the bottom maybe stick a rock on the outside or something so it doesn't move. And then you've got the post being the, the nerf, the, the pool noodle, and then the fencing that you super glue into it and you could kind of pop it up around him. (laughs) You know, another thing I thought about like a block with like a chain and a like handcuff around his ankle. But again, (laughs) my ideas get shut down. Uh, so you, right. you might as well just hook a ball and chain to the kid's ankle then if that's, well, where that's you what you go in. I was in. thinking. I just don't know where you can get ball and chains <laughs> at anymore. I mean, I'm coming up with a hillbilly solution here, but uh, I mean, I'm sure you could uh, melt us some of your iron down that you found. And <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, these are just ideas, people. I'm, I'm not actually going to do it. I told Steph about the, the, the lead and, and she threatened to fly to Ohio and beat the crap out of me. So we're not going to go there. Um, Gypsy also shut it, shut it down. So I mean, the, no, you could do one go. of those, those backpacks with a leash. I mean, I've seen plenty of parents do that. And if you're talking a gigantic field, huge field that's far away from the cars and far away from anything like that and you give them enough space to run like they'll run they'll run like you know and you still yeah. have eyes on them in a way and you don't have to watch your yeah. machine and <laughs> I, you know the the biggest problem with him i you know I, i'm probably smart enough to figure something out safe that wouldn't get cps called on me and stuff <laughs> Um, but I mean, he's liable to climb out of something and be gone, eat dirt, you know, and you turn your head for a second. I, I let him out. We took a break on a bike ride and we're probably 50 yards from the river 
And I put him down, and he is so fast. I started walking and then fast walk and then an all-out run. And don't get me wrong, he didn't make it. I'm a paranoid parent. If Steph would let me, our kids would be in bubble wrap. So I make jokes about ball and chain, and I would never do anything like, yeah. like that. It's, it's, I hope everybody knows I'm joking. But, I mean, we were, you know, we weren't even halfway to the river, but, like, I had to break out into a full – and fat guys don't like doing that. You know, I don't like to break out in a full run. But that little guy's got some wheels on him. I mean, he is fast, but I could see, like, even if I could put something out in a field to contain him, he's going to be like, oh, okay, cool, I can't get out of this. Let's eat this dirt. You know, what's dirt taste like, you know? And, uh, again, his mom mm, yeah. food food that idea. So <laughs> I don't know. He, I, you know, I, I don't think I've got much longer. He's starting to listen when he, when he's doing something, um, you know, but you know, it, it, he doesn't really listen, but if I start to get up, he's like, Oh, oh dear, come dad. I'm going to stop. I'm done. Dad, dad, I'm done. He, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's in trouble. But uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Hopefully, hopefully soon. We went out trick or treating, and I saw kids his age like walking and holding their parents' hands, and I'm just like, "Wow!" I mean, Randy will drop to the ground and and you know just dead weight, and you got to pick him up and stuff. Like he'll walk. I mean, he loves it. Just don't hold his hand. You know? <laughs> um, he's a he's a ball of energy. All of energy, big time. But cute, he's cute and button. Yeah, yeah, and he he's definitely fun. is. He's my little buddy. <laughs> my little buddy, but yeah, I just I haven't come up. With, last year he was taking naps, so I had a couple of fields that were right. Like I had one down a lane, and it was literally there was iron and stuff on both sides of the lane. Oh, I'm losing you. Uh, yeah, you're breaking up. Are you there? I am. Can you hear me? I I completely lost you. If you can hear me, I lost you. I can hear you, Mike. Hello, hello. Uh, nope. I think for some reason I'm not sure why you can hear Hear me. <laughs> um, everybody well, who's still can in hear me, chat. I guess we'll call it a night. Can you? Oh, there you are. Yeah. I don't know what happened. You were gone. Was it yeah, me or can you? Can you hear me now? No, all of a sudden you started breaking up and yeah, it was back and forth. I could hear you. <laughs> huh. And, I couldn't uh, hear you. Weird. No. And they said we can, well, we're brave. We're... They could both, oh, yeah, everyone ahead. can hear us fine now, so. <laughs> oh, good, good. Well, I'm, I, that's all I have. If you have anything you wanted to talk about, I just kind of talk no, everybody's I'm, ear off. I'm glad you were able to join me tonight. It's, uh, it's been way too long. Me too. And I am yeah. glad, you know, even if you haven't gotten out to texting, you're still getting out there, which is awesome. So Yeah. Yeah, it's been nice. I mean, I get to go see history, and I do some research, and Randy and all, I'll drive around, but uh, go look at places and line stuff up for another time. But um, other than that, everybody's working. I really don't have anybody to watch him. So it's kind of, you know, is what it is. Yeah. But me and Randy still have fun. That's awesome, though. Yep. Yeah. That's awesome. You ready to call tonight before we start coughing again? Before I start coughing yes. again? <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. I hope you feel better. <laughs> Even if it Thank was just yeah, on um, the podcast, but still, I hope right. you feel better. <laughs> I'm feeling so much better. I just have this stupid cough um, that's lingering, but um, I'm doing real good. Real good. Yes. So is Randy. Good. Good, good. All right. Well, um, again, thank you for joining me tonight. <laughs> oh, my and, pleasure. Um, I'm so look, happy to be back on. 
Yeah, look forward to it again here soon. You'll have to let me know um, when you do get out again so we can have you back on. Yeah, we'll do that for sure. All right. For Sounds sure. good. Every, everybody tell Gypsy happy birthday. Yes, yes, please, everyone. <laughs> Bombarder. Well, thank all you right, all we'll for... talk to you later. Yes, have a good night. Good night, everybody. Good night.